Okay, so my name is Lauren Ray and this is Sexton Blake. So Sexton Blake is often referred to as the other Baker Street detective. And on the surface, he does appear to be quite similar to Sherlock Holmes. So both detectives have a sidekick, they have friends in Scotland Yard, they have a, a housekeeper who even share the same first name, which is Martha, in case you're wondering. But there is an important difference between the two, because while Sherlock Holmes was originally the exclusive work of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, there were many different writers of Sexton Blake stories, each of whom introduced a slightly different version of the character. So Sexton Blake was created in 1893, and since then, over 200 English language authors have written over 5,000 stories. And these were published regularly until 1978 in the form of the, Sax the Sexton Blake magazine. And the character also appeared in comic books, on TV series, in films, and on the radio. But whereas Sherlock Holmes continues to enjoy undiminished levels of popularity, from the 1980s onwards, Sexton Blake starts to fade from view. And today, the spirit of Sexton Blake is kept alive by a number of die-hard fans, including Mark Hodder, who's a writer and whose website is really the place to go to if you want to find out more about this character. Now, I'm a specialist on the cultural history of Argentina, so what am I doing looking at Sexton Blake? Well, I didn't know about this character until I came across him in this magazine. This is called Bijikin. It's the world's longest running children's magazine and it's been published continuously in Argentina since 1919. In Argentina, the magazine is famous for its educational content and its promotion of Argentine history. And generations of school children grew up with the magazine because teachers used it as an educational resource. But in the early years, the magazine wasn't very educational, it was more literary. And in each issue, in the 1930s, there were up to eight short stories and three serialised stories every week. And if you compare that with today, the magazine publishes only one short story every week. So what's interesting for me is in the 20s and 30s, the stories published in Bijikin are mainly foreign authored by Spanish, French, Italian or British writers. Because in Argentina at that time, children's literature hasn't really been established. So the founder was a Uruguayan called Constancio Vigil. He was a children's author known for his didactic and moralistic stories. And it's clear that a lot of care is taken in selecting stories suitable for the magazine. For example, this one by May Wynne, the pseudonym of British writer Mabel Winifred Knowles. It's a Western story. And we have a little box here, information for parents that reassures parents Everything published by Bijikin is carefully chosen from a moral and religious point of view. And the fact that it appears in this magazine is the best guarantee that it contains nothing which could be harmful to thrill-seeking children drawn to highly harmful reading. So this reflects a common concern held internationally. But 1932 is quite late to be flagging this up. The dime novels in the US and the penny dreadfuls in the UK had been causing middle class moralists quite a lot of anxiety from the 1850s onwards. Reading true crime stories, for example, would surely inspire impressionable young readers to a life of crime themselves. In Britain, there was a drive to counteract the dangerous influence of the penny dreadfuls by establishing higher minded magazines such as the Boys Own magazine and another magazine with the wonderful name of Chums. So the magazine which first published the Sexton Blake stories carried the slogan, no more penny dreadfuls, these healthy stories of mystery and adventure will kill them. So Bijikin takes a lot of these British stories from these parent approved publications. This is one by Edgar Wallace, he's most famous for being the writer of King Kong. P.T. Etherton, or Lieutenant Colonel Percy Etherton, who was in the British Army in India in the early 1900s. This one is on here because G.O.E. Rochester turns out about to be George Ernest Rochester and he was somebody who was a pilot in the First World War and wrote lots of children's stories. But none of these stories, or ones like them, were as popular as the Sexton Blake stories, which in the 1930s has its own magazine. So it's no surprise that Vizikin also takes these stories for publication. And it's around the same time an Argentine publishing house called Editorial Tor is publishing the Sexton Blake Library. And Tor published over 700 Sexton Blake stories in the 30s, like this one, La Casa del Silencio, 
This is the original, published by Amalgamated Press in the UK. And then later on, La Mansión de Silencio, a different, uh, a different translation, published by Bijikin, serialised over a number of weeks. So this is quite an expensive practice, buying stories in and translating them. But we don't really know, we know that Editorial Tor didn't pay for rights, but we don't know if Bijikin did. But we do know that both of them commissioned new original Sexton Blake Spanish language stories, and they did this without the knowledge of Amalgamated Press, who held the rights to the character's name. So Tor published stories that were called Sexton Blake in Buenos Aires, and Bijikin published stories more suitable for the magazine's readership. Because the problem with the original ones was that they'd started out as parent-approved stories in the 1890s, but by the 1930s they'd become a bit racy. So the House of Silence, for example, by the end of the story, law and order is restored, the master criminal is captured, but along the way there are numerous murders, gun battles, scenes of false imprisonment, beatings, and such themes are in conflict with Bajikin's guarantee of wholesome literature. So Bajikin starts to publish Asanias, or Exploits, of Sexton Blake. Shorter stories running over four issues with simplified plots. And this is one example, the Terror of the Night, in which Sexton Blake solves the mystery of this creature you can see flying, which is half man, half bat. So a Batman, but not the Batman, because he doesn't turn up until 1939. But this Batman has the whole village terrified, and it just turns out to be an inventor who's got some wings on, but he's sort of flying around and thwarts a jewel heist. And at the end of a story, a local farmer is uncovered as an internationally wanted criminal in a surprise reveal, which does remind one quite of Scooby-Doo. But the point is that Scooby-Doo doesn't happen until 30 years later. So this is the kind of the way that children's stories are moving, of something that's really meant for children and not something that's also appealing to adults, like Sexton Blake. So Bijikin, by using the name Sexton Blake to write its own stories, were able to harness the international popularity of the character and infuse new, simplified detective stories with the legitimacy of a British setting and the conventions of the classic detective model. So whilst Bijikin is, Bijikin is pursuing its noble mission of delivering healthy, wholesome reading to Argentine children as part of a wider endeavour to educate the next generation of Argentine citizens, it's quite possible that they weren't being quite honest and honourable with their own business practic practices by failing to respect international copyright law. So aside from Sexton Blake and his exploits, why do I think that the presence of British stories in Bijikin is so important? Well, these adventure and detective stories are concerned with themes like the triumph of good over evil, the promotion of fair play, the eventual maintenance of the status quo. They are largely set in Britain and in different parts of the British Empire and are ultimately uh, concerned with promoting the idea of the British Empire at the very time that Argentina is becoming part of Britain's unofficial empire in order to negotiate a more favourable trade position. So at this time, Argentine writers and politicians are very worried about the influence Britain has, the very time that their children and nieces and nephews are becoming schooled in the ways of the British Empire as they are entertained by the weekly exploits of characters such as Sexton Blake. So just to illustrate the extent of the British influence at this time, I'm leaving you with a couple of pages. We've got two established British writers here, Percy Westerman and S. Walkey. We've got the advertisement for the next Sexton Blake series, an advertisement for a company that, made, that makes English ties, and perhaps most interestingly for a children's magazine, an advertisement to get your false teeth at the Anglo-French pharmacy. So thank you very much.